Let's kick off with Paul. I know Joby is very, very popular in the community. Uh, it's a space that people are interested in. Busy quarter for you guys. Uh, you kicked off final assembly for the FAA flight testing, completed commercial readiness flights in Dubai. You had the Blade acquisition, which I think a lot of people in New York were buzzing about. Were there any surprises or milestones that stood out this earnings call? What would you specifically call out as important to pay attention to for retail investors? Yeah, so it really was uh, a busy quarter, guys. This was sort of like an all cylinders quarter um, across everything that really matters for our business, whether that's the certification of the aircraft, the production of the vehicle, um, or commercialization. And I think you saw that on display with some of the announcements that you mentioned. So we started to put into final assembly the first conforming aircraft, which will be flown by FAA test pilots later this year. And that's kind of the last leg of certification that begins to unlock commercial opportunities uh, for us. Second, um, we announced a number of commercial partnerships. Um, so a, distri a distribution relationship with a company called ALJ in Saudi Arabia, um, a defense partnership with L3 Harris uh, to do hybrid uh, autonomous versions of our aircraft for defense applications. And then importantly, as you mentioned, Katie, the acquisition of the Blade short haul helicopter business, which is really the sort of ground, the, the sort of base of what commercialization is gonna look like for us. It gives us the routes, the customers, the takeoff and landing infrastructure from day one to really begin to scale the service in New York, in Europe, and a number of other, other markets around the world. I want to ask, I mean, the shots that we're just showing are beautiful. I know you, we mentioned at the top, you're the first outside investor. This looks like something that is so futuristic and far-fetched. If you saw it in the slide, I'm curious, what did you, what did you hear in that first meeting or what, what kind of piqued your interest where you were like, yeah, I'm, I'm going in? So look, I, I got to know the Joby team almost, gosh, more than a decade ago. So if you think it's futuristic now, it was really futuristic back then. Um, and at this point, the company was sort of five people and JB, the founder and CEO, is sort of backyard. Um, I think what I saw then is sort of what I think the market is starting to appreciate now, which is this transition from combustion engines to electric motors really unlocks something fundamental in aircraft design. It lets you build new aircraft with different capabilities that simply weren't possible with big combustion engines that just get bigger and bigger and more efficient. Um, so we really started with that premise of rethinking kind of what an aircraft could be and what sort of performance targets it could hit. And it's really exciting, frankly, to see competitors, the rest of the market kind of appreciate now, 10 years later, what I think we saw in that early period. Hey, Paul, first off, uh, congrats on the success of Joby. I think Joby is close to an all-time high, if not that. Uh, it's just catching a major bit this year. I've been a big fan of the EV toll space for a while. I've always said that the real money in that space isn't the flashy demos, but plugging in the real-world systems that have that budget, demand, and sense of urgency. And I do believe that the acquisition of Blade makes perfect sense for what Joby's vision is. And it unlocks a massive TAM because Joby has always been or always wanted to be this full stack operator. That's what makes them very unique against like the archers of the world. I call them the Tesla of the skies because they want to own that full stack operations. And the problem has been that without the infrastructure, without like customer access or real world data, you're kind of a lot of these even told companies are burning capital just to stay airborne i do believe that blade changes that because it gives joby this instant foothold in a revenue generating operation and also a lot of brand equity in major urban markets and po most importantly probably a front row seat to how um logistics are happening at a rapid commercial pace like how did you guys come up uh get this acquisition through the finish line like i think it was a slam dunk acquisition i'm shocked that you guys are able to, now I want to say steal their assets, but like what a, what a merger It's incredible. Yeah. So look, I think you're right. Um, that to sort of deploy commercial service, it starts with the aircraft, but you need another, a, a lot of other pieces. You need the operations, you need the infrastructure, you need the routes and you need the customers. And we've been sort of methodically building this both ourselves and in conjunction with partners for a very long time. When it comes to things like customer acquisition, we have had a deep, a, a large investment and a deep relationship with the folks at Uber. 
and Joby flights will be available on the Uber application from day one. That's about first and last mile transportation to your flight. And that's also importantly, Shay, about questions around customer acquisition. Like how can we make this as available as possible? But you're right that Blade certainly supercharges that effort um, because we have a built-in base, we have built-in brand equity, and we have sort of built-in routes that people are already demonstrating a high willingness to pay in order to save time. So we were super excited to kind of be able to make that happen. And if you think about the history, look, we've known Rob and the Blade team, again, kind of going on probably 10 years now. I remember flying with Rob um, in a Blade from Santa Monica Airport out to Palm Springs uh, for a conference. And what he told me then, which I think he still believes now, is that one of the biggest impediments to building out that business is the aircraft that they're using. Helicopters are too expensive, they're too noisy, so you can't land where you wanna go. You can't uh, fly with the highest sort of tempo operations that makes for a more useful service for end consumers. And we have an opportunity with our aircraft to address both of those issues head on from day one. And we think that's an opportunity to massively expand the TAM that a business like Blade has historically been able to go after. But I do wanna touch on one thing, Shay. Look, we always have approached our business model in a multifaceted way. We do believe that vertically integrated, wholly owned, wholly operated is the right way to commercialize in certain markets. But we have always been open to sales, leases to JVs with partners, um, and importantly, defense, which really looks like aircraft sales as well. Um, so this has been a core tenant of the business going on at least seven years since we started our engagements with the DOD. I'm glad you brought that up, Paul, because I'm very bullish on the new age of defense. And part of that theme is <laughs> what's happening above. Have you? I know you guys don't get a lot of attention on the defense front because you guys are doing so much on the other part of the stack. But you guys are a defense operator at the same time as like the archers out there. Have you noticed any kind of behavioral change on the government side on JVs post-Trump presidency that they're being more uh, willing to take the inf investments towards like these new secular growth themes that are inevitable, maybe not right now, but eventually the world is heading towards that way. They want to fund it ASAP. Yeah. So I appreciate you sort of calling out the work that we've done in defense because it's not something that's new for us. We started those engagements, as I said, almost seven years ago. Joby is to date the only company that has actually delivered aircraft to DOD customers at DOD facilities, the only company that has trained DOD pilots on how to fly the aircraft and the only company that has demonstrated longer range hybridization of the vehicle with a hydrogen fuel cell version of the aircraft that we flew for almost 561 miles last summer. Um, so we have continued, I think, to kind of take the next step in commercialization with DOD customers with our recently announced partnership with L3. So we're bringing the platform and the vehicle level autonomy, and they're bringing the sensors, the payload, the use cases because they work with these customers every day, and also the synchronization of this new asset with other assets in the field. And to your point, look, I think it's a time of reflection um, for many of these um, DOD branches about what the future of low altitude aviation looks like. I think conflicts around the world recently have suggested that that future is probably not 30, $40 million crewed helicopters but is something that is cheaper, something that is faster, something that is more flexible in its payloads. And I think we've got an opportunity to deliver a proven platform with an incredible partner against very important use cases like contested logistics, counter UAS, um, and even areas like electronic warfare. One more question for me before I pass it to Katie. Uh, you guys have had some incredible partnerships right from the get-go. Like where you talk, mentioned Uber, Toyota has been a major thought partner for you guys from the beginning. How has these major uh, companies accelerated the point A to point B of where your progress has been on trying to get to that commercial front? So we've been, I think, sort of pretty methodical in terms of how we build out the partner set that we've been going to. Although, you know, when you're doing something really ambitious, it's probably smart not to do it alone. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, and our partners are sort of unique in the category and not only being partners, but in almost all cases, significant investors in the company, folks that are sort of like with us and, you know, have their shoulder to the wheel and frankly, financial outcomes tied to our success. So Uber is one of those. So 
As I mentioned, Joby flights will be available on the Uber application from day one. We will use Uber for the first and last mile transportation to, to our flights in markets around the world. Uh, another important partner is, are the folks at Delta. Um, so we are working with them on infrastructure, like for Katie, I suppose, um, at places like LaGuardia and JFK. And Shay also, we're not forgetting LAX. That's, that's <laughs> Delta has a big Me presence. Me first, though. Um, <laughs> Uh, and we think about, and we think about, look, how can we combine our aircraft for the to and from your home to airport, um, with your commercial flight and make that journey as seamless as possible. And if you can kind of one click book, both your commercial flight and getting to and from the airport or to and from your final destination via Joby, we think that's a great customer experience and something that delivers real value for customers, mm -hmm. whether they're Joby customers or whether they're Delta customers. Um, you mentioned Toyota, Shay. Um, uh, Toyota has invested, gosh, more than a billion dollars in the company at this point in time. And they are a close partner on manufacturing. And frankly, we couldn't ask for a better one. There is no company in the world that is better at building complicated, regulated hardware at scale. And this isn't you know, just a sort of partnership in name. There have been Toyota engineers shoulder to shoulder with our engineers on the manufacturing floor for going on four years now. As we think about the next important challenge for the company, which is really about how we scale production, we think that is going to be importantly tied to our relationship with Toyota. As we're moving production lines now from our existing manufacturing facility in Marina to our new manufacturing facility in Dayton, Toyota is helping us figure out how to optimize those lines, change production processes, reduce labor costs, increase efficiency. And they're doing that with a deep wealth of knowledge of having done that successfully for more than 100 years. Well, I'm glad we touched on partnerships because not only from like logistics and obviously bringing this ambition, ambitious vision to life, it's good to have, as you said, thought partners, co-creators, also on the side of just awareness for, for your company and the stock. Seems like, you know, aligning with an Uber, a Delta, Toyota, known for safety, for example, is good social proof. And we, we talk a lot on this show about sort of this intersection between uh, marketing and the brand of a stock and the ticker brand that are built. And I think Joby is one that the stock to its community has been quite interested in. They're very enthusiastic. I think you have people that it's one of those things where like people are like, gosh, I would love to experience that myself someday, similar to a Waymo. Uh, how do you think about, you know, bringing this comp growing this company, scaling this company, you just came off your earnings call planning to, to communicate to your institutional investors and your analysts on one hand, and then people like me on the other who interested in you guys, because frankly, I would love a lift to the office. How, how, what is your mindset in terms of engaging uh, people like the viewers here today? Look, seeing is believing um, for something like this, uh, you know, renderings, static photos, like it's better to see it in real life. And especially given the low noise profile, it's even better to sort of hear it in real life. So we made a concerted effort, guys, to kind of take the aircraft around the world and give people an opportunity to see it fly, to hear how quiet it is. Um, and we're going to continue to do that as we build closer and closer to certification. Just some of the places that we've already done demos are Japan, South Korea, Dubai. We actually did one in lower Manhattan going back a year and a half now. Um, you can see the photos on our website kind of around the Statue of Liberty. And the reason for doing that is to sort of give people an opportunity to experience the future early. I think one of the things that we're also thinking about now is, look, how can we invite folks that have been enthusiasts of the company that sort of want this in their market to our facilities, to see production, to see flight test. So I think you're going to hear some more about how we're really trying to engage the community that, look, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but some of these folks on Reddit and Twitter are doing better at analysis and due diligence than many of the analysts that cover us. Um, and we'd love to give those folks a front row seat um, to the work that we're doing, um, because building supporters in every community around the world is going to be critical to our long term success. Love that. I saw Shy light up when you said that. That was a, the personal point of pride for Shy. He has great takes. And for listeners at home, now you heard it. Put, put a baller analysis of Joby on Reddit. Tag it, and maybe you will get a front row seat. I love it. It's it's sort of like the Robin Hood playbook. Paul, thank you so much. I know you've had a busy 48 hours. Congrats on the acquisition, on the earnings. 
Uh, we hope you'll come back next time you have an update. And hopefully, you know, Shai and I will be zipping around in these things soon. <laughs> Katie, Shai, thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Hope I get to see you guys soon too. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Bye.